Rodolfo Acuña, this evening you're being presented the highest honor given by the National Hispanic Institute. We are truly moved by your presence and are gathered to convey a recognition that extends beyond your very publications through the years. Rodolfo, you've done much more than be a highly published author, a recognized scholar, and known and applauded expert in Chicano Mexican history. Your writings have given us much more. Your work has given our community a written history, one before it was omitted and erased. You have given us importance and value in the time when our presence was belittled and cast aside. And through your wisdom, energy, and love, Rodolfo, you have guided us as a community to observe, embrace, and celebrate our way of life as a precious holdings in our collective hearts and spirits. In this context, sir, your contributions extend beyond the printed word in every class of Chicano studies that exist today in our nation's colleges and universities stretched across the country, your many messages resonate deeply in the souls of thousands of young Chicanos and Chicanas. Thank you, Rodolfo. Thank you for your kindness, sir, and affection, expression of love for all who proudly proclaim their Chicano identity. And thank you, Rodolfo, for the many hours of pain and sweat that you undoubtedly spent hidden away in the lonely confines somewhere in time and space, carefully crafted every word so that your work would eventually engage us in the remaking of ourselves. We thank you, we ask you to help me greet and applaud our Lifetime Achievement Award recipient, Dr. Rodolfo Acuña. And you just go like this. You know, first of all, I have to thank uh, Ernie, his wife, Gloria, the Institute. It's, you know, it's, it's an honor. But, you know, it, it, I can't say that really people deserve honors when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. I've had the best job in the world. I was a full professor at the age of 35. It gave me a long run. Uh, I wrote books, not because of my genius, but because of people. Chicano Studies, for example, at our place, which is the largest in the United States, was started by students. Their sacrifice. It wasn't started by my sacrifice. I was a technician who got paid, and consequently I was able to put it together. I, you know, every time I start to, to think of myself as a leader, I think of my father. And my father, when I got my PhD, I went to him and I told him, I got a PhD, I got a doctor. I'm a doctor. And he says, Si eres doctor, que curas? He says, If you're a doctor, what do you cure? And really, I couldn't cure anything. And I saw that, you know, and since then, every day I get up and I thank my parents for, for having made me a Mexican. Because being a Mexican gave me the, the tools to make the right choices. And this is what you're going to do out there when you become leaders, you're going to have to make the right choices. And you know, I didn't have a choice. I had to call myself a Mexican because my sister was dark. And I would not renounce her. But in my generation, many people changed their name from Martinez to Martin. They changed themselves from Acuna to Acne. Now you, you have a tremendous, a tremendous opportunity because you can make more choices. But you're going to have to make the choices for people because you're very lucky that, that you're here. 
but there are an awful lot of people who are hurting. I have students in my classes who, uh, who have to travel three hours one way to make it to classes. And so they commute. Some of you are going to be very lucky. We have an awful lot of immigrants who don't have papers, who can't go to college. And sometimes they're the brightest uh, students in your classes. It's up to you at whether we are going to really, you know, we're really going to make it as a community. Because as La Raza Unida used to say, he says, una mano no se lava sola. You know, one hand does not wash itself. We all need each other. And thank you very much for inviting me. I always like coming to Texas, even though I look at Texas as a foreign land, you know, uh, being from California. But we're, I'm from the land of the pochos. I'll see you, thank you very much.